Hi everybody, uh, I'm getting used to working in my new workshop now. I still have a few little things to do, little odds and ends and a few shelves to put up and storage areas to put up and that. Um, but I'm gradually getting it the way I want it. Uh, I've managed to finish off a couple of knives. I'm very uh, grateful for the patience of the people involved here because James has waited some time for his. Uh, and then Matt Tiny's waited also quite a while. Uh, I'll be starting work on my uh, email list knives. Uh, I've taken the, the, the deposits for that uh, and I'll be starting those probably in a week to ten days. So you should be hearing from me again soon. Uh, and then I'll hopefully clear that within, um, I, I hope, a couple of months, three months at the most. Um, and then I'm, I get asked a lot, are you going to take any orders when you open, in, open for orders again? <clears throat> well, the fact is, um, the answer to that question is, no, I'm not taking any more orders. Uh, I am strictly going to just build knives and uh, then I'm going to uh, advertise them for sale on my website. Uh, because I've lost so much time um, negotiating and... Uh, taking orders uh, it does eat so much into your time um, whereas in I can get up in the morning and decide yes I'm going to make a batch of knives and they're going to be three mils this this week and then I'll have this wood and that wood and I can fit whatever woods I've got available onto those knives whereas if I'm working for orders uh, I've got to source the woods sometimes for um uh, for, for the people, for the customers. And some of the woods are just ridiculous to find. Uh, some people have been very kind and sent me the woods. Uh, and sometimes I've had to search high and low in it. And I can spend quite easily an evening uh, on the internet searching for various pieces of wood for people. And uh, I don't charge any extra for that service. Um, maybe I'm a fool to myself really there. Uh, but I want to move away from orders and I just want to come and build my knives and when they're ready just sell them. I've got then I've got not got to wait for anyone you know, to get back to me via an email or I've not got to wait for someone to get their money ready and stuff like that. And uh, it did just go a lot more smoother for me and I, I might make a living doing it that way. Um, right, two knives finished. Uh, these are for Matt. Tiny and uh, James Lawson. Uh, so first up, we look at. Um, I don't know what the lights like. Hang on, let's see if I can get you better light. Let there be light. That might just fool the camera a bit. That one. I'll turn that one off. Leave that one on. Uh, There's the sheath, James. Uh, I didn't do a matching fire steel because the fifty-pound block of wood fitted to your knife. Um, the desert iron wood comes in the, the grade that I've got here comes at around a fifty-pound block, and uh, I'm not going to really want to cut it up to make fire steels. Um, so this is, I think, a bit of pen uh, Arizona pendulum. Um, Burl, I think the fire steel is, and you've got the new shaped fire steel. Um, these knives are a bit bigger than my normal because uh, these people requested they wanted uh, bigger handles, uh, and so I've actually scaled the blades up as well to match. So you've got a completely scaled up knife. Um, I don't know if the light's doing this wood justice, really. Let's see. And you've got red liners, tapered tang, apex pommel. And there's your internal curves. And there with my bearded chin in the background. My old plunge lines. Uh, 
And there's the flats and the grind on that side. And there is the tip. Let's get the camera to focus. Now this is the one of the first blades with the um, pressed logo. I used the hydraulic ram to press the uh, the logo, uh, which is also which has uh, created another never necessary um, procedure. I now have to normalise the blades before I heat treat them to stop warping, and so it's had a, it's had a full. Uh, benefit of normalisation, heat treating, triple tempering. So that's uh, that's your knife James, thanks for your patience. Uh, usual thing with the dangler, with the logo on the back of the dangler. Now for Matt Tiny, this is Matt I got you the old style fire steel, so I have some of these left over from the knife show. And this one is a matching walnut uh, handle on this, so uh, it's a, it's an elongated handle, but it had the walnut, so I put that on your knife. Uh, so that's your your sheath drain on the black back, edge dyed black. And you've also got the, the dangler with the uh, jack law embossed into the lever. Again, slightly enlarged knife, longer handle, bit of dirt, bit of dust in the, in the. I need to tidy the. Um, well, you'll have to excuse that. I'll clean it before I send it to you. Bit of uh, fluff in the lanyard tube. Stabilised walnut scales. Tapered tang. And there's your plunge lines. Let's get the camera to focus. Hand rubbing. There's a bevel. What if it will shave me? No. My whiskers are staying for the time being, you'll be pleased to know, or some of you will be pleased to know. I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep them on for, but there you go, Matt. There's your uh, logo. Tip, let's look at the tip. Tip. Bit of dirt on the tip. There's the tip. Uh, Don't say tapered tang, yeah, tapered tang. Uh, so that's it. That's your knife, Matt. Um, I'm working on a batch of five four mil classics. I'm doing a a, a few uh, three mil classics as well, uh, which are going to be slightly different. These are going to be um, slightly leaner Scandinavian grind, and perhaps more slightly more of a drop point to them, um, and um, more more for the woodland carver, I think, rather than the heavy batten battener. Uh, so. Um, they can have a leaner grind on for that purpose. Uh, so I'll be, I might well be advertising those on the website uh, in the near future. So with that, I'm going to get back to work now uh, and see what I've got to do. I've got, I've got the kiln clicking in the background. You might just be able to hear it. That's uh, tempering uh, a batch of blades for me now. Um, so I've got to work on those. And then, uh, well, there's always something to do in the Jack Law workshop. So with that, 
Um, thanks for watching. If any of you are interested in uh, in the great outdoors, if you go and check out my other channel, Wiltshire Man, you'll see I've been on an adventure. I went to the uh, the Lake District and we climbed up some of the um, the Lakeland Fells or mountains. Some of them are around about eight to nine hundred meters in height. I had a wonderful time. Um, so go and check that out on Wiltshire Man if you're interested. So for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.